Now, Chris Roper has been appointed editor-in-chief of the Mail and Guardian, and Angela Kuntal from The Witness in KwaZulu-Natal appointed editor of the newspaper. Roper is currently the Mail and Guardian's online editor and takes over from the highly respected Nick Dawes, who's taking up a senior position on a newspaper in India. Chris Roper, a very warm welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, the MNG has a digital first strategy, says your communique. Mm. I think I know what that means, but you're going to explain mm. it to me. Yeah, we also think we know what it means, so mm. we're going to put it into practice mm. now. Um, essentially, it's where... Um, so the most important part of, of what we do is creating stories and then serving them to readers. So what, what Digital First speaks to is saying, when a story comes in, the first platform of call for where it's published is digital, because you want to get the first, you want to get the fastest, you want to get it to the biggest audience. Only after that, you see how it plays out in other platforms like tablets or mobile or... Um, or print. But it can be tricky sometimes because you can often scoop yourself ahead of your Friday publication date of the newspaper. Is yeah. that a chance you've got to take these days? I don't think scoops yeah. exist anymore yeah. and, and certainly point. won't yeah. exist anymore in the, in the very near future. I mean, I'm actually thinking digital first is old-fashioned strategy. Yeah. So social first is a way that lots of newspapers are going now. We actually, you publish first to social media because you know they're going to beat you anyway. So you might as well be there mm. with your own contribution. So what we're looking at is saying that the different ways stories play out and the different manifestations of stories. So you can have a really nice, beautiful, long-form piece in the newspaper, much more analytical, something fast and snappy online, you know, something that's a lot more interactive on your, on your tablet editions and that kind of thing. So you can't actually fight what's happening. It's impossible. But as editor-in-chief, you are going to have to manage that digital relationship with the newspaper, given that the newspaper itself uh, is still the core product, at least at this stage. No, we, yeah, well, not necessarily. Yeah. Well, no, hopefully not. <laughs> Uh, we believe that the core product is Mail and Garden content. Mm. Where it exists, is, it doesn't matter to us. Now, certainly most of the revenue comes from the newspaper at this stage, but only a fool would, would think that newspaper revenue is going to be sustainable and it's going to be, you're going to be able to grow it, and only a fool would think that newspapers in the current form are going to be, be around in three years, five years. So what we're looking at is saying that there is no print team anymore, there is no digital team, it's all one team, which is a digital team because print is basically a form of digital for us now. And so what happens is you just, you just choose where, where the story will best play out and how to best serve your readers. Because what's really important is the relationship with the readers. Where we're going to make our money is not in somebody buying an iPad edition, buying a, a print edition. Um, we're making our money from what we know about our readers, how we can serve them, how we can sell on what we know about them and, and how much we can get them to, to engage with us. What we're selling is engagement. It's not, it's not any more like copy yeah. sales and that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of an old cliche, but the thing about content is king. It's never been more true in this age now than in the past, has it? Well, it's, it's mm. even more true now because it's king in the sense of, of the actual kind of a, um, dictator kind of a king where we actually have to make sure that our content is only available to our people. It's not a, a kind of benevolent king anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a cruel king which says, you have to make sure you own your content and that your readers can only find your content where you are. There's, there's, there's no, you know, disseminating it for free. In to the, the short term, though, do you still remain fairly confident about paper and print? Six weeks ago, uh, the man that you're taking over was sitting there. Uh, he said, yes, it is. It's still very important. You obviously agree mm -hmm. with that. Well, he can be very mm. confident because he's off mm. to a newspaper that has mm. 1.7 million <laughs> circulation a day, times, and, yeah. you know, <laughs> 3 billion readers an hour, whatever. So he, he can be confident. <laughs> I mean, he's going to one of the yeah. few English language print markets where print is growing. I'm confident in print, absolutely. I'm certainly not confident in the way newspaper business models run in South Africa right now. And I know our business model is not going to be selling newspapers going forward. And, mm. and in the short term, it's not going to be that. Mm. And I mean, literally, we're looking at... In three years' time, I would aim that digital and other revenue is more than our print revenue. Mm. Just a final question. I'm always impressed when an editor starts talking about brand extension. But that's something that is first and foremost uh, part of your new strategy. Absolutely. I mean, we, we, uh, we think that the Mail and Garden brand is, stands for a lot of things that are about integrity and authority, but it also stands for a certain kind of a lifestyle and a certain kind of a person. So we're hoping to do things like, we've just opened a, a Mail and Guardian restaurant called mm. The Newsroom. Couldn't really call it The News Cafe, apparently mm. it was taken. Um, we're hoping to do things like, um, you know, we have a lot of events, critical mm. thinking forums that we run sure. that are brand extensions. We're also hoping to do things like open up a shop with Mail and Garden branded uh, uh, paraphernalia. I was doing a research trip to De Politiken in Denmark and their best selling item in their shop are airline pressure socks. They sell mm. 1.8 well, million 
pairs of socks mm. a year or something. So, you know, there's so many places for newspapers to go now. It's, it's an incredible future. Well, we look forward to wearing that uh, Mail and Guardian branded Panama hat. Chris Roper, <laughs> well done and uh, congratulations. Good luck in your, in your new venture. All right, from the challenges of journalism to the power of online conversation and how a brand really should do it. Last week, a man named Richard Neal posted a long and funny comment on UK maxi pad maker Bodyform's Facebook page about how the company had lied to him through their advertising campaigns, leading him to believe that uh, that time of the month involved a lot of blue liquid, extreme sports and fun music. It received nearly 85,000 likes. Now, instead of ignoring it, Bodyform responded with a video featuring Chief Executive Officer Caroline Williams, played by an actress, apologizing and explaining that the company needed to lie to protect men from graphic details. Hello, Richard. I'm Caroline Williams, the CEO of Bodyform. We read your Facebook post with interest, but also a sense of foreboding, and I think it's time we came clean. We lied to you, Richard, and I want to say sorry. Sorry. What you've seen in our advertisements so far isn't a factual representation of events. You're right. The flagrant use of visualization such as skydiving, rollerblading and mountain biking, you forgot horse riding, Richard, are actually metaphors. They're not real. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but there's no such thing as a happy period. The reality is, some people simply can't handle the truth. In the past, we've tried to be more honest in our approach. In the 1980s, we ran a series of focus groups to help us gauge the public's reaction to periods. The cramps, the mood swings, the insatiable hunger. And yes, Richard, the blood coursing from our uteri like a crimson landslide. So, we knew we'd have to change our strategy. And so, from that day to this, we have managed to maintain this illusion. But you, Richard, have torn down that veil and exposed this myth thereby exposing every man to a reality we hoped they would never have to face. You did that, Richard. You. Well done. I just hope you can find it in your heart to forgive us. Oh, sorry, Richard. You did know that we do that too, didn't you? Hello, Caroline Williams. And there is more on that little brand win on our Facebook page. Here is the address. And just ahead on the programme, how to yawn and make coffee appear. Just like that. It's a great new brand idea. News that moves. ENCA.com.